this year's Vulcan Open Air was nothing like any other before, and not only because of the enormous amount of rain, which made it virtually impossible to walk around the site of the legendary festival, but also because of several extraordinary shows by legendary musicians and on-stage reunions, the significance of which I personally started understanding only days after leaving the festival. Vulcan Open Air In case you missed it, around 30,000 ticket holders from all over the world were not able to attend this year's Vakken Open Air, as the festival has almost gotten cancelled, putting its famous motto, rain or shine, to question. No, seriously, I was driving through Germany already amidst the heavy rain and texting the festival organizers and all of the musicians I knew who were supposed to perform at Vakken Open Air this year, and I was just like, tell me if it's getting cancelled, and I was actually this close to turning around and going back home. Yes, that's true. Especially after reading that the cars are not allowed to enter the festival premises anymore, while still being roughly two hours away from the town. And even on the first real day of the festival, it was still unclear whether it will happen, as the schedule kept shifting and shifting, with the first major act performing only by around 5 p.m. that day. Come on. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> is it designer stuff? Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's the new posh. Yet still, we all know that even the worst of the weather cannot stop metalheads from enjoying their favorite music, and even more so from honoring their heroes. Especially when it's someone who has rightfully become the personification of rock and roll and metal itself. Mr. Lammy Kilmister. On the first day of the festival, the two surviving Motorhead members, Mickey D and Phil Campbell, headed the ceremony of enshrining Lammy's ashes at Lammy's Bar in the village of Vaken, next to Lammy's legendary hat, boots, bass, and a martial stack. His spirit's always been here or at these festivals, but now we have a little bit of a physical deal here as well. So people can come and pay their respects, yeah. you know, for a long, long time. When Mickey D was a guest on my channel a couple of months ago, he actually pointed out that the idea he and Phil have is to place bits of Motorhead history around the world, paying tribute to Lemmy at all of the big festivals he and the boys enjoyed playing the most, and this ceremony was the second after last year's Hellfest statue opening in the series of many Mickey, Phil and the Motorhead estate planned for the future, allowing fans from all over the world to come and pay tribute to the legendary rocker. That was his life, so we would love to, to help him prolong this and maybe some other festivals, one in, in, in Poland, one in, in Germany, one in Ukraine, yeah. a big Lemmy statue. You have a lot of statues in Kiev, I know that. Get the culmination of the Lemmy Forever celebration at Vakken Open Air did not come until later that evening, when Mickey and Phil joined Lemmy's old friend Doro Pash during her headline 40th anniversary show, which reunited not only the two remaining in Motorhead members, but also saw Blind Guardian's Hansi Kirsch, Udo Dirk Schneider, Anthrax's Joey Belladon, Holy Moses' Sabina Klassen, Udo John Roth and many others joining the Metal Queen on stage. And yeah, I m might have actually even shed a tear during one of the songs played that night. <laughs> Motorhead has always been one of the most important bands for me in my life, and the memories I gathered from meeting Lammy and seeing Motorhead in multiple countries are actually amongst the most cherished ones in my life as a metalhead. <laughs> you know. And seeing how much love, years after passing, Lammy and Motorhead still get both from musicians and from the fans was actually one of the most emotional moments of the entire Vakken Open Air Festival this year. Because Lammy's and Motorhead's influence and impact on the development of rock and roll and heavy metal simply cannot be overestimated. Don't forget us. Our name is Motorhead. We play rock and roll. Doro's 40th anniversary show itself, though, was a thunderous culmination of everything the Metal Queen has achieved throughout her long career, and the many friends who came up on stage to greet her were just yet another proof that after forming Warlock in 1982, Doro Pesh has become a living legend who influenced hundreds of bands in the many subgenres of metal. It was 
actually the very first time that I've seen Doro live, and what impressed me the most is how much love this woman has for both her fans and just for heavy metal in general. I mean, those are just the emotions you cannot act out. You can see that even now, 40 years later, she still truly cares about what she does and what is even more important, still acts as a fan of some of her fellow musicians. Raken! Raken! Raken the Lord! Sing along! By the way, my friend Endora's guitarist Bill Hudson, who for the record I consider to be one of the hardest working guitarists in the world of modern metal, mentioned that the band almost did not have any time to practice with the many guest musicians before the show, and yet still this performance was definitely among the highlights of the entire festival, and possibly the biggest treat for all of the die-hard fans of old-school heavy metal, far beyond just Doro's immediate fanbase. And to enhance that treat, next day Metal Queen also presented and spoke in details of her upcoming studio record, which is set for release on October 27th later this year, playing it in its entirety to the crowd and fans backstage. Would you like to hear it, guys, girls? Yeah? Okay, okay. No, just to be clear, I won't be playing it here, but after listening to it, I can say that it absolutely kicks ass. It's time for And just like the Vakim concert, Conqueror's Forever Strong and Proud will actually feature several anthemic collaborations, including a couple with nobody else but Metal God himself. And overall, I just have to say that it is absolutely incredible how much love such bands as Judas Priest get at Vakim Open Air even if they don't perform there. I mean, you literally could hear Priest blasting from pretty much every store and every food stand, and it almost felt like they were actually on the bill this year, which they were not. And so yes, the remaining Motorhead members reunion, together with Dora's all-embracing heavy metal celebration, will definitely have a long-lasting impact not only on those who were able to witness it, but also on the current state of heavy metal in general, as it once again showed that classic metal scene is alive and well, and I simply cannot wait to rewatch that performance when it will come out on a DVD, which I know for a fact it will. <laughs> the worst things about such festivals is the whole fact that there is just so much going on that you simply cannot attend at all. No, seriously, you just want to clone yourself or have one of those things that Hermione Granger had in Harry Potter. I should get one of those next time. Three turns should do it. Again. And no matter how hard you try to plan things out, you still miss out on even some of the headline appearances or have to watch them from a rather weird spot especially if you try to take as many interviews with musicians as possible in between those shows. And so, the other reunion, the significance of which I of course did understand at that point, but it truly got me only after re-watching some of the videos online afterwards, was of course Megadeth's reunion with the legendary Marty Friedman, which I was watching from a slightly weird angle, because at that point I was standing there and waiting for Iron Maiden to hit the stage. Just like that. And just to be clear, I don't feel bad for it, because I got to see Iron Maiden up very, very close and get something like this from Nico. Nice! But either way, in the wake of Morty's announced appearance on stage with Megadeth during their recent Budokan concert, after seeing both Megadeth and Morty Friedman on the bill of this year's Vakken Open Air, even though scheduled on different days, I immediately assumed they will repeat the Budokan trick and even try to bet with some of the people at the festival about it which no one wanted to do. Why, why, why? Yet even though I anticipated this, when Marty hit the stage, the feelings of excitement overwhelmed even me, although I personally cannot call myself a die-hard Megadeth fan. <laughs> Marty 
Marty Friedman is a unique guitarist in the world of metal, and seen with how much ease and yet passion he performed the legendary solos and at the same time how coherent he looked on stage, and not only with Dave Mustaine, with whom of course he had a chance to perform together many times, but also with Kiko Loreiro, who by the way in no way tried to steal the spotlight, yet was able to play in great synergy with Morty, was simply enchanting. And I know it might not make any financial sense as Morty has pointed out before, but seeing how first Iron Maiden and then Halloween were able to look past their differences and combine the best of the different eras with their united lineups raises at least some hope that something similar may happen to Megadeth at some point. Especially since this time around Marty performed for longer and actually stayed with the band until the very end. <laughs> I just want to point out that if Megadeth finds a way to bring Marty Friedman back in the band and have Dave, Kiko and Marty together on stage, I can't even imagine what kind of arenas they could sell because at that point they might actually become the most talked about thrash metal band in the world. But overall, Fucking Open Air is an extraordinary festival. It is a place where metal truly comes alive and extraordinary things may happen. And this year's reunions, despite a nearly cancelled festival, may have a much longer lasting effect than we may think. And what is most importantly, show once again that metal, in all its forms and interpretations, is more alive than ever. And I just want to once again thank all of you guys for showing so much support for me and so much support for the cause because of which I went to Vakan Open Air. And once again, I want to thank Rob Halford and Jane Anders of Judas Priest and of course to the Vakan Open Air team and Ukrainian officials for helping me make that happen. The donations are still coming in, although at a slower pace at this point. So I want to gather everything as much as I possibly can and bring it up to Chernihiv very, very soon. And after that, I will of course make sure to post a very detailed report on pretty much all of my social media accounts. Which, by the way, if you do hang out anywhere outside of YouTube, please do send me a friend request, because I do actually post quite different type of content on other social media platforms. Oh, and by the way, I just wanted to point out that it's an absolute shame that only around 30% of the people who are watching Metal Pilgrim videos are actually subscribed to this channel. SHAME! So if you still haven't done so, and especially if this is not your first time on the Metal Pilgrim channels, Please consider doing that right now. Exactly. But anyways, thank you so much for watching this video, guys, and we will prevail. Slava Ukraini.